Hello gamers, I am Mike Zorch and welcome to another Bugged Out. It's been a while since I have done these videos where I basically explain ways to get around problems in game, whether those are bugs or their performance issues or anything like that you might run into in your games. Today I'm going to be talking about a method that I discovered that will allow you to get a little more performance out of Star Citizen. But though this is a temporary solution, uh, the reason why Star Citizen doesn't have, and, and setting aside the conspiracy theories about the game, Star Citizen is in active development. It is a game that is in alpha and it is constantly changing. Like every six to nine months, a new update is released and it changes everything. And not only is the client changing, the server side is changing. Star Citizen is very dependent on the performance of the server as well as the client. And one of the components that is currently being replaced slowly, and some of it has already been rolled out to the client, is the renderer. Now the current renderer is old technology. It is not really built to take advantage of modern CPUs very well. It's old CryEngine tech. And it needs to be updated for current CPUs to better utilize multi-threading in the current batch of CPUs, the current AMD and Intel chips. It doesn't do that very well. And so you have poor performance in Star Citizen and, and a lot of games that are not very well optimized use a, use a renderer pipeline that is not very efficient on current multi-core, multi 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 systems. Now there is a new renderer in development and slowly being rolled out. A portion of it has already been rolled out and some people have seen a marked increase in performance. But your mileage may vary depending on your configuration, what processor you have, your operating system, what software you're currently running alongside Star Citizen. Uh, some, some people use different software alongside Star Citizen for like managing controls, things like uh, Joystick Gremlin and other other stuff like that, which takes up CPU cycles and also a variety of different graphics cards as well. And so your as I said, your mileage may vary, but this trick should help you squeeze out a little bit of performance and maybe even smooth out some of the hitching that you see in the game as you're playing it. Sometimes you will encounter problems where you're going fine then all of a sudden you, your performance will just tank for a few seconds and then improve or let's say you go to orison and or orison's a, a good example orison is a gas giant and it is a very difficult place to render because you can see for far distances and they have the new cloud tech also Lorville, which is the example I'm going to show here, Lorville has the new cloud tech as well, and that's going to make Lorville, which already had some uh, performance issues before, actually run better. Now, my frame rate hasn't necessarily significantly increased. It's seen a small bump, but the difference is, is that it has smoothed out. Instead of being a slideshow or being very jerky, it's smoother. You don't have that jerkiness that I used to have, and it's actually gotten better. And as the new renderer gets rolled out more and more and more over the course of this year and parts of early next year, and Vulcan is finally implemented. Vulcan's coming as well, Vulcan support. That should eliminate a lot of performance problems on the client side. Server side's a different animal. 
Server side is something that you can't do anything about on your end. That's what server meshing is for. Server meshing is going to make it so that the servers are not under such a heavy load and they won't bog down the client because the client is also very dependent upon the performance of the servers as well in this game. It's just, it, 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 it is a reality of how Star Citizen works, of how it has to work. It's a reality of how the game has to work in order for every, all, the, all its features and things to function. And so it is very dependent on whether or not the server is running well. So here's the fix that I found that will help your performance. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a program called Process Lasso. Process Lasso is it's basically a task manager replacement, and I'm using the free version here, so I'm not using the pro version. Though you can you can buy the pro version if you want. This this thing's got a ton of features. If you really want to be able to, uh, you know, really control your machine and how well it runs then you're going to want to get this tool it's really nice now i have star citizen running in the background the way you're supposed to and also a, another note is everything i'm about to do here will not trigger easy anti-cheat star citizen uses easy anti-cheat to prevent cheating during fps gameplay because there have been a problem of cheaters in some of the events like the jump town event and such do people were using trainers and auto aim bots and things like that they implemented easy anti-cheat to prevent that easy anti-cheat usually blocks what i'm about to do but this doesn't block that now i've already done it to mine but i'm going to show you how you can uh improve the performance of Star Citizen, and this does not violate any terms of service or anything for Star Citizen at all to do this. So what you want to do is you want to find the process for Star Citizen on here, and let's see, got to go down, and okay, there's the launcher, RSI launcher, we want to find Star Citizen, there it is. All right. Now I've already done this here, so I'm gonna. What I did is for the launcher, I went to Affinity, go to Always, and I hit Disable Symmetrical Multiprocessing, or 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 Symmetrical uh, SMT, basically. You can do this in your BIOS, but I would recommend you do this in software with this tool, because if you do it in the BIOS, you're doing it for everything. Whereas you don't want to do that for everything. You just want to do that for just one app. So disable SMT for the launcher. And for the game, I did it here. Disable SMT. So you're running on the actual cores and not the, not the uh, multi-threading cores not the additional cores that are that your CPU has because it's multi-threaded. They're not actual physical cores. They What it is, is it's seen by Windows as an additional core, but it's actually just a, a scheduling thing inside the CPU. Then, um, set the priority. Set your priority to high. Now, once you do this, you will have to restart the game in order for these changes to take effect. And so what will happen is, if you're running, say you have that new Intel CPU that has efficiency cores, you don't want the game running on those lower end cores on that chip. It's just gonna really affect your performance and the renderer in this doesn't make proper use of the CPU so you will get really sh a shaky performance out of it. So once you set this and you restart the game, I'll show you, you will actually get better, smoother performance in the game. 
Okay, we're here in game, so let me get out of my bed. All right, now, my frame rate, as you can see in the counter up there in the upper right-hand corner, is not great, but my movement is really smooth. It's not jumpy, it's not jerky, it's smooth. Let's go outside. Now this also could be due to some of the improvements that have been made to the renderer. But, I have the volumetric clouds turned on. And also, there's a lot of particle effects here in Lorville as well. Let's get outside. Before turning this on, my performance wasn't that great. Which means when Gen 12 finally does hit, this is going to be... This is going to perform amazingly. Right. Go down to the lobby. Especially with Vulcan. Where it makes actual proper use of SMT in your hardware. All right, here we go. Had a little bit of hitch in there, but not nearly as bad. And this is playable. I'm getting, oh, uh, about 21, 22 frames per second. I could maybe bump this up by, uh, say, reducing my resolution some, or I'm looking at, since graphic card um, prices are starting to drop, I'm also looking at maybe upgrading to a, uh, I've got a 1080 in here now, maybe upgrading to a 3080. Graphics card prices are in free fall right now because of the crypto crash. Well, I'm looking at potentially doing that. But as you can see, my game performance has really improved. It, I've never had Star Citizen perform this smoothly here in Lorville. And the addition of the Cloud Tech. The Cloud Tech is very CPU intensive. Let's get on to the train here. Oh, gotta go this way. I haven't been in Lloydville in a while. Gotta remember where everything is. Here we go. All this just smooth. Even going into, um, even going into Quantum Drive has been significantly smoothed out. Before it would just itch really bad as you're jumping into into Quantum Drive, but not really anymore. This will improve with Gen 12. As I said, all of this is temporary. All of this is temporary until they get the Gen 12 renderer fully implemented. You can use this if you're having issues with performance in the game. Another thing you, I would also recommend you doing, let's go into the settings real quick while we're riding the train. Go to graphic settings. And what you would wanna do is you wanna set your quality to high or very high, depending on your hardware. Why you wanna do this is because this takes more load off your CPU and puts it back onto your GPU. If you put it on lower, it's not going to improve your performance. It's actually going to make it worse because it's going to put more of a load on your CPU. And now we are moving and I have never seen the train run this smooth in Lorville before. Seriously, I, I've never seen this this smooth in Lorville. I'm actually curious. I want I. 
actually want to go to Microtech and see um, how smoothly the train ride is there at New Babbage. This is amazing. I, I've never seen this game perform like this before. And it all because, all because I'm not using, you know, the, um, I'm only using the uh, physical cores in the system. I'm not using the logical cores. I'm only using the physical cores. It's amazing. Again, as I said, this is only temporary because the new renderer will fix this. So this is just a workaround to make the game more playable now while you're playtesting. And it won't trip up easy anti-cheat. And there you go, a way to improve your performance in Star Citizen without uh, tripping up easy anti-cheat and you know, it's a temporary measure to improve your game until the Gentrove renderer is fully implemented and, and Vulcan is fully implemented. It's a good game to play. It's a, it's a complicated game, technically. And as I said, it's it's changing frequently so the game is being updated frequently and it's got a lot of complex systems under the hood a lot of the perform a lot of the performance is dependent upon the performance of the servers and there's a lot of factors but this helps the client side run better on your machine until the new render which will utilize the new tech in your CPUs a lot better. So, hope this helps. Also, follow the uh, other advice about changing the graphic settings in the game. That should also help because setting it higher will take more of the load off of your off of your CPU. It also depends on how much video memory you've got. If you got like six gigs of video memory, you might want to consider. Uh, setting it to high or or uh, if you've got a little more set to very high I've got it I've got six gigs and I got it to on very high and I'm not having any problems so you don't need an uber graphics store I've, I've seen people play star citizen with 3060s you don't need an you don't need uber hardware it's not that this game is like takes massive amounts of processing power to run it's that the the old tech that's being replaced is not efficient it's not well optimized and they're not going to optimize that code because they're replacing it they're changing it out for something new that is optimized and that's going to take some time we're going to see bits and pieces of gen 12 rolled out over the over the rest of this year and Vulcan is, I, I've seen Vulcan on the roadmap for next year. And that's also when we're getting 4.0 and we're going to need that because 4.0 is coming next year. And if 4.0 does make it next year, there are no delays. We're gonna get Pyro, a new star system. We're gonna get server meshing. 4.0 requires server meshing. And those pieces have to be in place in order for that to work. If they don't, well, we won't get 4.0 next year. But until then, this fix will allow you to get a little bit better performance out of your game while your playtesting starts it. Anyway, hope this helps. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video, consider subscribing to Resort Central and click the bell icon for future notifications. Don't forget to check out the Gamers Bay community over on MeWe. MeWe is a social media platform that, ta that takes your privacy very seriously and they don't run ads or collect your data to sell to advertisers. Uh, if, um, if you're having trouble finding Process Lasso, I will put a link to it in the video description below so that you can try it. It works on Windows 10. It works on Windows 11. Oh, see you in the verse, and I'll see you next time.